Hi. For those who don't know me, I'm Stephen Plotkin. I'm a biophysicist here in the department at UBC. You might ask why a physicist like myself would study such a biological question as the evolution of multicellularity. Well, along with my group, shown here in the upper right, I've undertaken this journey of a thousand miles starting around 2017. And this is why I put this quote by Liao Zi here. But we're physicists in my lab, and we'd rather say a journey of a thousand miles consists of about 2.30 times 10 to the sixth steps, or at least it feels like that. And uh, we've come a long way, but I feel like we've really just begun. But it's pretty clear now that we're in it for the long haul. So multicellularity has occurred up to 40 times on the tree of life. And hence, it's a solution that evolution finds repeatedly on different genetic backgrounds and different epochs of time. And thus, it has many aspects of universality to it, something that would be of interest to a physicist. My group is interested in how animals like us became multicellular. It's now hotly debated whether it's periphera or sponges, you can see on the, the tree there, or tenophora comb jellies that are the first surviving group of animals to differentiate from all the rest. We can't say tenophores like what's shown in the movie in the middle right side there from my lab. Uh, we can't say that tenophores are the most ancient animals, everything's equally old, but tenophores might be the sister group to all other metazoans, or multicellular animals, defined through a speciation event that happened about 600 million years ago. If we go back any further on the phylogenetic tree, life is unicellular. So something spectacular happened here at the dawn of animal multicellularity which gave birth to the riot of shapes and sizes and diverse functions that we see today, such as what you see in worms or insects and birds, mammals, and specifically humans. So multicellularity starts when initially nearly identical cells cooperate to do two different things and thus commit to different cell fates. In this dividing tenophore embryo on the lower right side, uh, this lineage commitment is determined by a genetic network involving stem cell protein factors that should be amenable to quantitative analysis. We're currently undertaking a project to do this analysis, both theoretically and experimentally, by manipulating the genetic network using CRISPR gene editing and related technologies. Understanding at the molecular level how the phenomenon of multicellularity can occur would answer a fundamental question about our evolutionary origins. If you're interested, please contact me. Thanks.